Hi, can you tell me your name? My name is Eric Napew. All right, and where were you born, Eric? Topeka, Kansas. Okay, and when were you born? August the 12th, 1952. August the 12th, 1952. So just a couple years um, before the decision came down. Yes. Correct. And so as long as you were growing up, basically you were in a, quote, integrated school, right? Well, yes. 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 My whole grade school was involved in Van Buren School, which was an integrated school. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, and I'm going to go back a little bit. And what did you end up doing for a living or your career? Or are you currently in your career? No, fortunately I'm not. <laughs> um, my career wound up being with the, basically the Mall Bell system mm -hmm. uh, for 30 years. I was a customer facing technician. I was in the training department, uh, sometime in the marketing department, sometime back in the training department, then back in my tools facing the customers. All right, okay. So, and you were retired from there. How long were you there again? 30 years. 30 years. All right. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> All right, well, can, let's get into about your elementary school. So, you were definitely one of the first few classes, not the first class, but one of the first few classes post the decision, where did you go to school at? Went to, I went to Van Buren School. Okay. You know. Now, what you, what you need to understand is I could see Van Buren School two blocks from my mother's doorstep, right straight up the hill. Mm -hmm. Monroe School was four blocks around the corner, which our house was at 18th and Van, 1800 Van Buren Street. Um, so by the desegregation, my oldest sister, seven years older than I was, went to Monroe School, but then rerouted to Van Buren to finish out her last couple of years of grade school. And my other sister's two years older than I, so she also went to Van Buren. So we were the only ones in the family that didn't go to Van Buren. My mother went to, Van, went to, went to Monroe, I mean, didn't go to Monroe. Okay. My mother went to Monroe, grew up in the Monroe neighborhood her whole life and lived there her whole life. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. there was this family legacy of Monroe and then you ended up at Van Buren. Absolutely. At, at just a couple of blocks away. But can you tell me, not I wouldn't remember, but can you tell me what the school was like? What was the atmosphere like? At Van Buren? At Van Buren. Well, the, our neighborhood was a mixed master of a lot of people. We had Native Americans, we had Asians, we had, uh, of course, black people, we had white people, but the common thing was nobody had a whole lot to talk about when it came to money. Mm -hmm. It wasn't real bad, but it was not a you know affluent situation for anybody. So when it came to blending at the school, nobody could talk about anybody else. Name calling that wasn't going to do you any good because you're no better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And I, I told the story you know a few years ago when they did the 50 year anniversary about us playing in the summertime at the school playing baseball. We might all start off one color in the morning, but by the time we got through in the afternoon, we were all dusty brown kids <laughs> rolling in the dirt and walking to each other's house trying to get something to eat. Mm -hmm. So the, it, was, it was a blending at that time. We didn't know anything or felt anything about uh, skin color causing any issues. I'd say middle school, same thing, because the middle school wasn't very far from that grade school. Mm -hmm. So the same people basically were, you know, blending in, but it was just a part of town that nobody could run around and say, you know, they're the greatest thing since sliced bread. But not until I got to high school to where I really started seeing some things that just weren't right and uh, needed to change. Well, my years at, at high school were from uh, 1967 to 1970, and I went to Topeka High School. And at the time, there had never been any African-American cheerleaders there had never been any African-American homecoming kings or queens with the title homecoming kings or queens. Um, there were a lot of things that when it came to counseling, um, there was people weren't being encouraged to go certain routes, more into the service of others mm -hmm. or clerical positions possibly, but 
Let's not talk about corporations and uh, being anything, you know, lawyers and doctors and things of like that. Uh, athletics, okay, but that even became a situation during our last year because of a lot of activity that was going on when we decided to act and to complete the process of having some equality. Mm -hmm. And it caused an all-school boycott to happen and uh, to be able to make sure that there was going to be some changes made. What was, what started it? Can you go a little bit deeper into the all-school boycott? Well, just those simple facts that we didn't feel like we were getting fair treatment. Mm -hmm. And we had very qualified people, you know, to get that treatment, but it wasn't offered. It was more hidden, okay? And, and you had to really do some digging to get, get the information that you needed. And uh, it just was not, uh, when you can't see somebody that looks like you getting anywhere, you know, that's a bad situation. So we acted on that. Mm -hmm. we, we actually started, uh, we got uh, African American Homecoming Queen in 1970, also in 71. Um, we had our first cheerleaders in 1969. We started our own black stage band for our own enjoyment, which I was part of that, that band, but <laughs> not much longer did I play after that. <laughs> and what instrument did you play? The bass guitar. The bass guitar. Mm -hmm. oh, I like a guitar. Um, I guess my question is, is, and it sounds like from your results, part of the problem was is that you didn't have representation in different areas of the school? It was starting to change. We were starting to get black counselors. We were starting to get um, uh, more people recognizing that we are now in the class that should be getting the benefits. Mm -hmm. And we would like to have those benefits, by the way. <laughs> Where the ones before us, it might rub people the wrong way, and later on in their life they might get rubbed the wrong way. Some of those things were happening if you spoke up and, and wanted some changes. So, I mean, even I was a pretty good athlete in gymnastics mm -hmm. and traveling around the state of Kansas you could feel these tensions because African Americans in gymnastics weren't that many of them around mm -hmm. and our team had five of us and all five of us were outstanding but we would show in certain situations and it was not welcoming mm -hmm. but uh, it was time for some of those changes. Well some of those guys I competed against for three years that were in other parts of Kansas when we first approached each other, it was kind of quiet, mm -hmm. but at the end of it, we were okay. Mm -hmm. We all recognized each other as our athletic abilities and we should be keeping it there, but some of the judging and some of the crowds, they weren't really wanting us around very much, but at the end of the day, it didn't matter. We were coming anyway. Until our last event in my senior year, which was a state championship, did a, the ugly start to really show up. And that, that really kind of broke some people down. Broke me down for sure, I'll, I'll say it. I got second in the state. And I was destined to be state champion. But it, it worked out better for me than a, four or five of my teammates that should have been champions also or placed very high. And um, it, it was brutal. Mm -hmm. so what the judges actually did to us, they had never seen us, some of them had never seen us before. And um, it really took some guys' careers apart that should have been high, rated high or placed in at least the top three. And I was the only one that was able to withstand that and got second place. But um, that was when I really felt it. I anticipated that we'd be feeling it before that, but that was the day that it happened. Right. So. Mm -hmm. when it, when it counted in a way, right? Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, when you're in a judging event, there's not supposed to be more than a point discrepancy in any of the four judges is watching your event. And I had a 3.5 point discrepancy when they first ruled on my event alone. <laughs> and they didn't want to ha actually stand up and have a caucus about it, which they're supposed to have. Mm -hmm. And by the time they put themselves together, they had to say, well, what'd you see that I didn't see? You know, and who is this guy, you know? Well, they found out who I was, you know, in the second round. I did the best I possibly could ever do, and but I ended up losing my two tenths of a point to a guy that I'd never competed against from from Medicine Lodge, Kansas. So, 
But those types of things are the things that you get, you know, when people don't really want to treat you fair.